Hello again. Uh, I'm here with uh, an example of a crank slider mechanism where I want to find the speed of uh, the slider D and uh, as a function of actually angle theta and these other parameters like the length of the crank AB and the connecting rod BD. So later on I'm going to give you the values for B and L and the angle theta and actually the angular speed and the angular speed obviously is related to the rate of change of angle theta, the angular speed of the crank. So let me do the analysis actually, and the method I actually I want to use is called absolute motion method. Uh, keep in mind that you could do velocity analysis using other methods such as um, relative motion or instantaneous center, which is a shortcut, the instantaneous center of the zero speed. Okay, so by the way, here I don't really need the angle phi because angle phi can be determined. I just want to, so let me remove that angle. So I want to actually get an expression in terms of, um, for, for the this, this speed of D in terms of the angle theta and uh, B and L, theta B and L, okay? So how do we do this? So the method, the absolute motion method, basically what you want to do is to define uh, the position of this slider since our objective, remember, is to find velocity of D. So you want to find velocity of D. That's our goal. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, actually establish uh, from a non-moving reference here. point A, which doesn't move, the position of this slider D. I'm going to call that S sub D. And if I could write an expression in terms of, uh, for S sub D in terms of the angle theta B and L, then I should be able to actually take the derivative of that and get the velocity. So remember that the uh, position has to be measured from a non-moving point, and point A is a good point. So what is S sub D? Let's go ahead and find S sub D. So S sub D actually would be this piece plus this piece. And in terms of the variable, this piece, the red piece, is going to be simply B cosine theta. And the green piece, actually, you see that this is actually uh, B sine theta, right? So if you have the hypotenuse and you have this B sine theta, then the green is going to be simply square root of L squared minus B sine theta squared, okay? So now for the, uh, and I'm going to now take the derivative of this, but before I take the derivative, the time derivative of this to find velocity of the, let me rewrite the equation for S sub D. I write it as B cosine theta for the sake of taking derivative. Let me write this as L squared minus B squared sine squared theta, uh, right? And raise this to power one half. Okay, it's easier for taking the derivative. Okay, so let me move over here and say, okay, velocity of D is the rate of change of this position vector S sub D. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. So remember now, we are taking derivative with respect to time. So the derivative of B cosine theta, B is just a constant. Derivative of cosine theta becomes minus sine theta. But don't forget that there is a the D theta DT because of chain rule. So we have a theta dot. And theta dot later on, you'll see that that's actually the angular speed of the, the crank, AB. Okay, but what about the next one? We have to use the chain rule, put the power one half down times the same parentheses with one power less, so that becomes minus one half. Then go inside, take the derivative of inside, derivative of L squared is zero. The derivative of B squared sine squared theta becomes minus two B squared sine squared theta. Then the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, theta dot again. So the typical mistake is that you forget the theta dot. All right, let's go ahead and clean this up. Uh, so if you actually refactor the negative, and actually refactor even the theta dot, this eventually becomes a B sine theta plus, you see that, uh, this expression here can go back to the denominator and inside the radical. So that would be the L squared minus B squared 
sine square theta in the uh, denominator and then the numerator will just have the b squared remember i factored the negative and i factored the theta dot so we just get b squared sine theta cosine theta so here we go that was the goal we got an expression for velocity of t in terms of the um these parameters b l and the angle theta so this is going to give us velocity of d uh, therefore um, if this body is rotating as you could see clockwise right I mean, now I'm talking about the crank, of course. So now let's put some numbers in here. So given, for example, omega, which is theta dot, omega of the crank, to be, let's say 10 radians per second, right? And let's say we take A to be one meter, the length of the crank, and the length of the connecting rod, I'm sorry, B to be 10 me uh, one meter, not A, and the length of the, uh, the connecting rod to be two meters, and let's say we are interested, let's do it for theta equal to zero. So theta equal to zero is obvious. Theta equal to zero is when the crank is actually horizontal. The crank is in this position. And then the connecting rod is like that also. And the slider is somewhere here. So you see when you put that in, sine theta is zero and here in the first term here and the first term here. So actually we get zero, which makes sense. So velocity of D is gonna be zero because it has actually, has it stopped at that position? It has reached its maximum position. Let's try it for another obvious angle, theta equal 90 degrees. Theta equal 90 corresponds to when this crank becomes what? Vertical. So you know that cosine 90 is zero, so this second term is gone, and sine 90 is one. So we end up getting minus B, which is one, times sine 90, which is one, times theta dot, which is 10. So we end up getting uh, minus 10. Now, what minus, why minus 10? Because it's moving actually to the right at that instance. So velocity of D is the opposite of what we have in this direction. So this is the positive direction as shown here, right? So that would be negative. So 10 meters per second to the right. And then if you try it for some other arbitrary angle, I just picked 30 degrees. Uh, I end up getting, um, you can try this on your own, velocity of D equal to negative 2.236 which means D is moving at this speed. Uh, I'm sorry, 7.236. I forgot to add this term to it. 7.236 meters per second and to the right. Okay, as I said, hopefully I'll come back and I'll show you a video uh, related to the other methods, uh, relative motion and also the instantaneous center. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening.